Oh, all right, man. It's been a hot minute since I've gotten a cut. Decided to do it myself. It's gonna be a self cut today. You guys haven't already read the title, but here I got my neck strips, putting it around my oh, not my eyes, and the neck. That's what they're used for. Yeah, <laughs> making a fool out of myself, man. I'm I'm the only one at the shop right now. It's kind of boring, so I decided to do a self cut. Let's get it. Here I just took my comb and I'm separating the hairs from each other, detangling them and getting them ready for the fade. Man, I'm not gonna tell you, but doing shear work with this much hair is gonna be a pain, man. That's why you'll see what I'm gonna be doing near the end of this video. As always, I like to start off with my foreguard, take down that bulk to finger's length so I know what I'm blending into. Yeah, and so we're just um, taking the number four guard with my cordless seniors, and I'm going straight up against the grain, all right? Make sure you're going against the grain, not with the grain, because that's gonna leave it longer. So here I'm just taking my foreguard again and I'm going on the left side. This is the place where I have my um, comb over disconnected. So I'm just coming off the ridge and just keeping that shape squared. Alright, so right now I'm just taking the floor guard again, it's closed all the way and I'm just uh, making sure that I'm not leaving any areas dark and I'm making sure to not go past the ridge because I want to keep that squared shape. Now taking my Babyliss Gold Effects Skeletons and I'm going up with the grain because if I set it at such a harsh line man, it's going to be almost impossible to take out. So yeah, let's get it done. I'm getting it um, to the same shape as my head and I'm keeping that same motion as I'm going behind the ear. I don't want to cut my ear, of course. And yeah, just follow these steps and you'll achieve a blurry fade. Now, with my cordless seniors, I have my lever all the way open. I'm gonna be setting my first initial guideline. So I'm just gonna follow that bulk guideline that we made. And we're just going about like three fourths of an inch and nothing too much off the, um, nothing too much off the sides because we're trying to keep that compressed. And the more we compress it on the sides, the more it's gonna be balanced out through the back. Yeah, you already know what's coming next, lever play. All right, so I'm gonna be closing the lever as I get down to the bottom of the guideline. Remember just to flick out using the C motion or the up and down motion. Remember you're coming in and you're coming out, pause. And yeah, make sure not to create such a harsh guideline because that's gonna be almost impossible to take out if you're trying to blend in.
same steps as the lever open. I have my one guard now and it's all the way open as well. The lever is open and yeah, I'm just creating that three fourths of an inch guideline and I'm making sure that it's kind of wider in the front area so that I can keep such a nice lineup. And as I get towards the back, it's gonna be a little um, wider. So around the ear area, it's gonna be a little tighter and around the back, it's gonna be a lot wider. The reason why I like to keep it a little uh, bigger of a guideline in the back is because if you notice in the back and you're cutting uh, someone up, you're going to notice that it's going to look compressed, especially if you're trying to do a low fade and you, you're just trying to bounce out whatever you have from the front area and as you get to the nape area. Alright, so right here I just have my 0.5 guard and I'm, yeah, I'm just doing my lever play action. So you're closing the lever as you go get down to the guideline and you're opening it as you go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right here, I got my two guard and I'm doing the exact same procedure. We're going three fourths of an inch and we're making sure that we're not digging into the shape. Remember that because if you dig into the shape, you're actually going to mess with the squared shape that we're trying to get into. If you dig in to your head shape, it's going to look rounded. have to remember that the half guards so the one and a half guard and the 0.5 guard is going to be your blending guards the only reason why you only want to use those for the blending is because it's just for detail you don't want to create another guideline so all you have to do is soften that lineup and prepare for the next step so what you're gonna see me do is soften this lineup first because I know it's not gonna take out the guideline so what am I going to do? I'm going to take my one guard open and just do lever play until that line is fully taken out. Yes, I know, I know, I'm being such a hypocrite, so I, I hate doing this, but I had to do it because I'm at the shop and I have some bookings filling up for the rest of this day, and they just booked today, man. And yeah, I'm just going straight in with clipper over no comb, and I'm creating that square shape. Yeah. <laughs> So if you guys don't want such a harsh um, line on the parietal ridge area, you're going to want to use scissors to shape that area up. And as you shape it up with the scissors, make sure you're not digging in as well because it's also such a controlling um, object. So you want to make sure that you're not entirely going into the shape. You just want to keep it squared. And then any loose hairs that you see is what you want to take out. Right now, I'm um, doing the wrong way of texturizing and that's because my hair is wet and it's going to be nearly impossible to see a natural flow. So you'll see that in the next uh, set of clips, 
that I'm actually going to blow dry my hair and texturize my hair when it's dry. And you'll see, you'll see why I'm texturizing when it's dry. And that's just because you wanna grab as much hair as you can and texturize just bluntly. Here I'm just preparing my technique for um, point cutting and that's going to be used for texturizing the hair so that you can apply product to it and it's going to look smooth. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you guys, man. You don't even need to have the most expensive set of scissors or even the most expensive comb like YS Park or Mutsumi. It's, it's, just, it's just depending on how you use it. And as long as you have like a blade sharpener for your scissors, just make sure it has that nice tension. And it just needs to be sharp scissors, man, for real. And for the comb, you just need a fine tooth and an area where you can part and start to section. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I'm not even going to be shy about texturizing my own hair. It's my own set of hair. Uh, it doesn't matter how thin it is for me. I'm just trying to get the tips so that when I apply product to it, um, I'm using texturizing powder, it's going to lay nicely and I think that I'm going to get a better flow with this be simply because I have more surface area to work with rather than such a blunt line that I have to keep applying so much more product during the day and it's going to be tough for my hair so I'm just texturizing it as much as I can so that product will lay nicer.
Yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys how much of a difference the texturizing um, technique that I did will apply to how uh, nicely that product will lay in your hair. It's because it's gonna look so much more natural as to having it so blunt. Don't worry, I sanitize it after every cut. But yeah, well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think the cut came out blurry. Agree with me if you um, think so too. And yeah, man, let's get it. Thank you for watching.